Turns out the rest wasn't history. Here is part 2 of Wrestling Origins CM Punk. Heads up, this is a direct continuation of Wrestling Origins CM Punk which I'll have linked in the description. So go ahead and watch that video before this one. We left off last time with Punk cashing in his Money in the Bank contract in mid-2008 where he won his first world title in WWE. Later that same night, Punk would make his first title defense against JBL which he successfully did. Punk would hold and defend the title for a few months until Unforgiven in September, where he was assaulted by the Legacy before the championship scramble match. Punk was left incapacitated by Orton's punch, so the title was forfeited and won by Chris Jericho. Punk would receive a rematch on Raw the next week, though it would fail in a steel cage match. Moving to October, Punk would team up with Kofi Kingston to defeat Cody Rhodes and Ted DiBiase to win the World Tag Team Championship. This would build the rivalry as the two pairs were part of opposing teams at Survivor Series, Team Batista and Team Orton respectively, though Punk's team would lose. Punk and Kingston would also lose their tag belts to John Morrison and The Miz at a live event in December, which is relatively unheard of. Around the same time, Punk would enter a tournament for a shot at the Intercontinental Championship. He eventually beat out Rey Mysterio for the shot, and after two matches that ended in DQ, Punk won the Intercontinental belt from William Regal to become a Triple Crown Champion. Punk would however lose his belt to JBL in March 2009. At WrestleMania 25, Punk once again competed in the Money in the Bank ladder match. He would win again, becoming the first person to win the match twice and back to back. On April 13th, 2009, CM Punk was drafted from Raw to SmackDown. He would quickly feud with Umaga who repeatedly attacked Punk when he tried to cash in his contract. Punk would go on to defeat Umaga in a Samoan strap match at Extreme Rules. That same night, Punk would successfully cash in on Jeff Hardy to win the World Heavyweight Championship. This was the start of an epic feud between the two. Punk would turn heel, feigning injuries and getting disqualified to keep his belt. Also, Punk would take shots at Jeff Hardy and his drug abuse problems by touting his own lifestyle as Straight Edge. The title would exchange hands at Night of Champions, but Punk would regain it at SummerSlam. Punk would end the rivalry by defeating Hardy in a steel cage match, forcing Hardy to leave the company as per the stipulation. This would earn Punk a slammy for Shocker of the Year. CM Punk would soon enter a feud with The Undertaker, where at breaking point he defeated the dead man in a submission match. This win was extremely controversial, as Punk actually tapped out to Undertaker's Hell's Gate submission, but the match was restarted after it was discovered the move was still banned as per Vicky Guerrero's orders. This was followed by Punk applying the Anaconda Vice, which won him the match, despite Undertaker never tapping out. It was eerily similar to the Montreal Screwjob as it even took place in the same venue. This meant the feud would continue and it was at Hell in a Cell that Undertaker prevailed and took the title from Punk. Taker would win the subsequent rematch as well. Moving on, Punk would form the Straight Edge Society which had him acting as a leader of a cult, converting superstars and fans alike to his way of life. He first converted Luke Gallows who had played the mentally incompetent Festus, ridding him of his mental issues along the way. Punk soon began growing out his hair and changed his appearance to resemble Jesus, and would soon start delivering sermons before matches. During this time, Punk would begin feuding with Rey Mysterio after being eliminated by him in the chamber. Punk would go as far as interrupting the celebration of Mysterio's daughter's birthday. The two would have a street fight at WrestleMania 26, a rematch at Extreme Rules, and a final match at Over the Limit. Punk would lose and was forced to shave his head as a result. This would be the start of the Straight Edge Society's breakdown as the group was disbanded in September. In October, Punk was sent back to Raw after being traded for Edge. However, he was quickly injured and sidelined so he began working on commentary on NXT and Raw to maintain a presence on TV. He would heavily criticize John Cena before eventually attacking him with a chair. He revealed later that he had taken control of the Nexus which fueled his actions. He would change up the group a little bit which was now known as the New Nexus and then use them to do his dirty work. The new Nexus would attack Randy Orton, costing him his world title match. Orton would retaliate and take out the entire group, setting up a match between Punk and himself. Punk would lose to Orton at both WrestleMania 27 and Extreme Rules. In June of 2011, Punk won the WWE Championship from John Cena. He also beat Rey Mysterio and Alberto Del Rio in that same week. Having proved his worth, Punk threatened to leave the company with the championship once his contract expired, which was somewhat similar to what he did back in Ring of Honor. This was when he dropped his infamous pipe bomb, criticizing not only the company but Vince McMahon and his family too. Punk would go on to defeat John Cena at Money in the Bank and proceeded to leave WWE with the top title. However, WWE went and ruined an amazing storyline by having Punk return just two weeks later to dispute John Cena's WWE Championship win on Raw, which led to a match between the two at SummerSlam. There, Punk would retain and become the true WWE Champion, 
only for Alberto Del Rio to cash in and take the belt after Punk was assaulted by Kevin Nash. After a feud with Triple H, who he claims set Nash upon him, Punk would make his way back into the title picture. He defeated Alberto Del Rio Survivor Series to win the WWE Championship once again. He would successfully defend this title against Del Rio, The Miz, and even Dolph Ziggler, who had defeated Punk in non-title matches. Despite the help of John Laurinaitis, who Punk hated, Dolph would be defeated at Royal Rumble 2012. Soon after, Punk would enter a memorable feud with Chris Jericho, which was based on Punk calling himself the best in the world. Punk would retain his belt at Elimination Chamber, beating out Jericho. Jericho would however continue antagonizing Punk, talking about his alcoholic father and questioning Punk's straight edge lifestyle. At one point, Jericho even poured alcohol on Punk after attacking him. This all culminated in a Chicago street fight at Extreme Rules, where Punk defeated Jericho to retain his title. After an interesting feud with Daniel Bryan and Kane, which had Bryan's girlfriend AJ falling for both Punk and the Big Red Machine, Punk would retain his title at Money in the Bank. On July 23rd, 2012, Punk would defend his title against John Cena, who had cashed in his Money in the Bank contract the week before. Punk would retain via DQ after Big Show interfered. After The Rock came out to the ring to stop him, Punk would turn heel and attack The Rock. This was motivated by Punk feeling people like Cena and The Rock were overshadowing him, even though he was the WWE Champion. As a heel, Punk would soon align himself with Paul Heyman. He would publicly demand respect from wrestlers and commentators alike while being extremely disrespectful himself. He would even brawl with Vince McMahon at one point. During an on-again, off-again feud with John Cena, Punk would retain the title multiple times. Most notably, he used the Shield to win a triple threat match against Cena and Ryback. After passing the one-year mark as WWE Champion, Punk would undergo surgery for a potentially torn meniscus, which sidelined him for a little while. He would even surpass John Cena's reign of 380 days on December 5th, becoming the longest reigning champion in the past 25 years in the process. On January 27, 2013, Punk defended his WWE Championship against The Rock, with the stipulation that The Shield couldn't interfere or he would forfeit the belt. After the lights went out in the arena, The Rock was put through a table by The Shield, and Punk won the match by pinfall. However, the match was restarted after Vince McMahon came out, and The Rock would pull off the win. This would end Punk's legendary reign at 434 days. After failing to regain the title, Punk set his sights on ending The Undertaker's streak at WrestleMania. This feud didn't have any real build-up to it until the real-life death of Paul Bearer, which Punk controversially used against the Deadman. However, in the end, Punk would be defeated at WrestleMania. Punk would walk out of Raw in April after voicing his frustrations and wouldn't be seen again for a few months. When he returned, he refused Paul Heyman's help and told him to get lost. Soon after, Brock Lesnar attacked Punk, though Heyman claimed that wasn't his doing. However, despite convincing Punk otherwise, Heyman turned on Punk by costing him his match at Money in the Bank. This led to a feud between Lesnar and Punk, where although Punk had his moments, he was ultimately defeated at SummerSlam. After a feud with Ryback and Paul Heyman, along with the Wyatt family and even The Shield, Punk and the WWE had a falling out. In January of 2014, Punk no-showed both Raw and SmackDown, and it was reported that he simply walked away from Vince McMahon and Triple H, saying, I'm going home. Vince said that he was just taking a break, but in the end, Punk just didn't come back. Punk confirmed his retirement on Colt Cabana's podcast and also talked about his poor treatment by the company. It was revealed that WWE officially handed him his termination papers on his wedding day in June of 2014. Since then, Punk has been signed to the UFC though has not competed yet, as well as taken up comic book writing for Marvel. He has been training MMA regularly since January of 2015 and after delaying his debut due to injury, Punk is set to fight Mickey Gall at UFC 203 on September 10th, 2016. And that was part 2 of Wrestling Origins CM Punk. I know you Punk fans will have enjoyed this one, so I'd appreciate it if you leave a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Also, be sure to browse the rest of the videos on the channel. As always, thanks for watching.